Why, hello there, listeners. It's Allie from the PJ Library Presents podcast team. And today we're bringing you a nice playlist, a not too long playlist, of stories all about sharing special family traditions. I imagine right now you might be on a long car or airplane ride, or maybe you're tucked away in a nice snuggly blanket fort. And after you're done with these stories, if you're looking for more awesome kids audio, our team recommends the podcast Story Pillar like Story and Caterpillar put together. In every episode of Story Pillar, you can join Sneak, Bean, and Meg as they tackle the sticky situations kids face as they grow and change, all with a sense of humor. You'll enjoy stories from around the world and hear advice from kids just like you. For more great family-friendly podcasts, be sure to check out the Kids Listen app. Mm -hmm. Grab a seat, a bite to eat, and settle right in for hugs, snuggles, stories, and more, and so many sweet things in store. Welcome to Afternoons with Mimi. All right. We're almost done sorting the recycling. My, you're such a good helper. Baba says it's a mitzvah to be a good helper. You've got the smartest parents, kiddo. It is a mitzvah to be a good helper and to recycle, too. Really? Oh, yes. Not wasting. It's super important. Speaking of, I've got an idea for a little project we can do together. Really? What is it? Put that bin down and help me get some art supplies from the cabinet. I'll show you. Okay, I see glue, some, ooh, jewels, like treasure. And, and, what's that, Mimi? It's a carton, all nice and cleaned out. And guess what we're going to turn it into? Um, a fancy box? (laughs) You're close to right. We're going to make it Sadaka box. Just like my special blue one. Yes, you have your special Sadaka box, but someone in your family doesn't have one yet, right? Oh, Mimi, are we making a special box for Baby Z? Ding, ding, ding. You're correct. I'm so excited. Let's get started. Mimi, um, do you have any paint? I think I want to paint this red first. And maybe some special stickers, too. You know what? It looks like I'm short on art supplies. Shall we go for a little walk? Yeah, that would be awesome. Okay, take my hand. Here we go. Hey, Mimi, um, why do we put money in a Sadaka box? I mean, it's really fun, and I like hearing the coins jingle in there, especially when Grandpa Ken gives me coins. But what's it all about? Well, do you know what Sadaka means? Is it like giving? Well, Sadaka comes from the Hebrew word for justice, and it means doing the right things by helping other people or causes that are important to us. Oh, okay. There are lots of ways to do Sadaka but the most common way is giving money. Sadaka can also include donating food, clothing, or toys, or volunteering. Like when we go visit the dogs at the rescue and play fetch with them? Yep. Oh, oh, look, it's the little free library. Mimi, is it Sadaka when we put books in there? Yes, it is. I'm going to ask Baba if we can take a Shabbat walk this week and do Sadaka with our old books. Did you know that when your Ima and Baba were first married, we would all take a little Shabbat walk together every week? Oh, watch your step. There's a little puddle. Oh, Mimi, what's this? I've never seen a refrigerator on a sidewalk before. It's the community fridge. Our neighbors share groceries with each other. Come on inside. Let's buy a sandwich from the shop to add to the fridge. Will we have time? I want to get that paint and make Baby Z's Sadaka box before Ima and Baba are back. Don't you worry. I've got a timer going. We'll be good. Two specials, please. Thanks again, Maurice. Mimi, when we added the sandwiches to the fridge, was that Sadaka too? Yes, my love. 
visiting dogs at the rescue, adding books to the little free library, or buying a sandwich for the community fridge. All of those are ways to do tzedakah. Mimi? Yes, my heart? Did you have a tzedakah box when you were little? Oh, I did. I had a special one that my grandmother helped me make with a milk carton, just like we're going to do, once we buy that paint. Cool. How long until we're at the store? <laughs> Less than a minute, Bobola. Do you want to hear one of my favorite memories of my grandma? Yes, please. I love when you tell stories about being little like me. When I was your age, I would go with my grandmother early on Friday mornings to a great big market outside. And we would buy our vegetables and fruit there, and sometimes our chicken for Shabbat, too. Was it noisy? <laughs> yes, and crowded. And wonderful. There were so many different kinds of people, too. Was it like the farmer's market that Ima and Baba take me to? Yes, but even bigger. I felt like it went on for miles. In fact, let's turn down here. Whoa! Welcome to the Union Street Open Market. This is just like the one I went to when I was little. Mimi, look at all the lettuce. And what's that? Is that a prickly fruit? And bread. And wait, is that guy selling clothes? And that person has toilet paper? Mimi, people are selling so many things here. Mimi? Mimi, when you were little, what was your favorite thing to buy? <laughs> well, you might laugh, but I loved picking out vegetables for our cholent. And I have this very, very special memory about my grandmother. She always carried her money in a little embroidered purse. Like your change purse? Yes, exactly like that. And my grandma would count out her money for the vegetables, and then she would always put one thing back. One thing? Yep. Sometimes an onion or a carrot, or sometimes we'd get a smaller bundle of parsley. Why would she do that, Mimi? So that we would have a little bit of change. I don't get it. Oh, Mimi, can we look over there? Sure, let's walk. Well, my grandmother was a big believer in Sadaka. So if we had $10 for our groceries and our items came to exactly $10, she would put something back so that we would have a little bit, even if it was just 10 cents to put in the Sadaka box. Whoa, look at all the things people are selling. I still do that to this day. Whenever I have a little bit of change for my groceries, I put it aside and... And then you let me put it in the Sadaka box. Exactly. And now we're going to have a box for Baby Z to put some coins into, too. We will. <gasps> Mimi! Mimi! That stall over there has stickers and some paints and everything we need. <laughs> well, let's head over and see what we can find. Mm. So it looks like we owe you... Five dollars even. Uh, Mimi? Yes, honey? Let's put back one sticker pack so we can have some money for Sadaka. That's a great idea. Okay, here you go. Four twenty-five. Thank you so much. All right, let's head back and get started on Baby Z's new Sadaka box. We still have time, right? Well, we have a full hour until Ima and Baba and your baby brother are back. Just one more sticker and done. Oh, it looks amazing. What a fantastic Tzedaka box. Well, there's Ima. Make sure you grab your backpack. And Baby Z's Tzedaka box. Bye, Mimi. I love you so much. Bye, kiddo. See you next week. Oh, Mimi? Did you forget something? I want to use the money in my Sadaka box to buy art supplies for other kids. <laughs> That's a wonderful idea, my love. Okay, I just wanted to tell you. See you soon, Mimi. Good night, Nishama. Magical bookcase to another world One like it and Mary and the friends are home Where there's wolves and hares living fairy tales Mr. Safe at the Golem and Glass Shoe Sales So come join us for the magic and mystery Maybe even a bit of Jewish history Auntie PJ's 
here to give us a taste of all the adventures beyond the bookcase, beyond the bookcase, beyond the bookcase. And one time, my uncle Levy hid the afikomen in my mom's plants. It took me forever to find it. <laughs> Jacob, maybe next Passover, I'll let you borrow my binoculars. I always have them handy. Did you know that the reason we wrap the afikomen in a cloth is to reenact the way the Israelites carried the dough out of Egypt? I thought it was just to keep it away from me. I could eat matzah all day. Well, that we all know. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, my merry band of travelers. What are we all laughing about today? Are we doing jokes? Oh, 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 okay, let's see. Mm, oh, ooh, why do we have a Haggadah at Passover? Um... Why? So we can Seder write words. <laughs> Excellent joke, Auntie PJ. Well, thank you, Evie. And no, we weren't doing jokes. We were talking about Passover. Ah, uh, yes. How are you all preparing? I know every family celebrates a little differently. Growing up, we would get out special dishes and bring all of our bread and cookies to our neighbors, the Summers. Mr. Summer, Tom, would pretend to pay my father a penny for everything, and they'd shake hands and have a good laugh. Micah and I are getting ready to welcome guests to our Seder. So many fun people are coming. Yeah, that's the best part, I think. We bought a bunch of cups to decorate, too, so everyone can have their own. Ooh, yes. The crafting parts of Passover are my favorite, too. What are you planning, Auntie PJ? Oh, well, I have to do quite a bit of cleaning. You never know where Hametz might hide in a library. <laughs> oh, and then, as you know... Every Passover, the library usually hosts a matzah pizza competition. Tastiest creation wins a free library card, two high fives, and unlimited book borrowing privileges. And then every year you tell us we're all the winners. I love the matzah pizza competition. It's one of my favorite traditions. My dad and I are working on a special recipe for this one. It might involve veggie chorizo and chocolate. Oops, I've already said too much. Oh, sadly, I'm having trouble finding all the necessary ingredients this year. A tomato shortage has left me sauceless. The nearby grocery stores are completely sold out of matzah. And because there's a dairy enthusiast convention in town, oh, I can't even get a hold of cheese. Quite a conundrum. Not unlike that time I had to solve Samson's riddle to escape from a hedge maze in Monaco. Wait, Auntie PJ? What? Are you saying we might have to cancel this year's matzo pizza cook-off? No! Oh, no, don't you worry, kids. No, 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 don't you worry. Oh, so, um, uh, what's on your Seder plate this year? Ours is pretty standard. We've got some parsley, haroset, an egg... A lamb shank, some romaine lettuce for the bitter herb, and... What am I forgetting? In my family, we add new symbolic things sometimes. This year, I'm adding an acorn to acknowledge indigenous lands. In fact, we stopped by to see if you had any books on Seder plates. My big sister has an allergy, so we use an olive instead of an egg. Wait, why is there a hard-boiled egg on the Seder plate? Excellent question! I love an inquisitive mind. As it turns out, I do have a copy of... Four answers. Everything you need to know about Seder plates in the back of the library. Perhaps you could help me tidy up and hunt for Hametz while you search for it. Is it on our favorite bookshelf? You know it. Now off you go. I'm going to look up online pizza sauce retailers and uh, send a postcard to a dear friend I met at Victoria Falls while we were spying on a... I mean, vacationing. Just a vacation. Not, not the other thing. Yes, um, goodbye. Oh, that was abrupt. And mysterious. It is dusty back here. Do you really think we'd find breadcrumbs hiding on bookshelves? You mean chametz? I feel like anything is possible in this place. Look, look! And, Jacob, that's not the book we're looking for. Humpty Dumpty and the Great Passover Feast. Now, what do you think that's about? Did you grab it from the... It's glowing! Ha! You know! Wow, that never gets any easier. <laughs> or any less cool. Hello, Mashal. We're Shh. back. Mr. safer has been really irritated that we've been here lately. Maybe we can just try to sneak Well, past. well, if it isn't a gaggle of mischief makers come to wreak havoc on the land of Mashal. 
No, no, I cannot have it. You'll have to turn back. You know we can't just turn back. We don't control this whole magical vortex thing. Plus, we like being here. Nevertheless... Take it, please. Hello, Golem. Blue, you are looking well. Take it, please. No, no, no. No ticket. Golem, don't you dare. Sorry. <sighs> Just when I was having the loveliest day. What's going on today that's so lovely, Mr. Seyfair? Well, dear sweet Humpty Dumpty is finally hosting a Passover Seder. He's been talking it up for weeks. We're all attending. Everyone is invited. Everyone? Well, not, I mean, well, it's like a fairy tale creature's kind of... Where is he hosting this Seder, Mr. Seyfair? His house. Gollum! What? They asked. I remember his house from our Hagdala walk with Chicken Little. It was that pretty cream-colored house all the way down that lane in front of us with the big high wall around it covered in moss and lilacs? Well, yes, of course that's his house, but do not bother him. He's probably all in a scramble trying to get everything done. He invited the whole town, and he's never hosted before. What a marvelous guest, though. Oh, I remember this one time he brought a matzo ball soup to Snow White that was positively breathtaking. And he always does dishes. Arrives nice and prompt, and you know I value timeliness. But he sure put a lot on his Passover plate, so to speak. Wow, sounds like he could really use some help getting everything together. Oh, he absolutely could. Say no more, Mr. Seyfair. Help is on the way. Come on, team. No, wait. I bye, 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 bye. Bye-bye, friends. And thanks for the tip on where to go, Mr. Seyfair. Why, Seyfair, why? Just once, don't... Give it all away. Such nice friends. Don't you start. Sorry. Hmm. This path to Humpty Dumpty's is so beautiful. Smell those lilacs, Blue? I'm surprised they're here. Lilacs aren't usually in season now. At least, not in our world. Hmm. I wonder how we make our way in. This wall seems to go around the whole place. Let me just grab my binoculars. Aha! Look, there's a giant egg-shaped door over there. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. I wish I had my own door shaped like me. Come on, let's go. I'm excited to see what his satyr will be like. Mr. Dumpty, we're here to help with your satyr. Hello? Ouch! Oh, my head. Oh, hello, Mr. Dumpty. I didn't see you under that picnic table. Um, what are you doing down there? Oh... I was so clumsy. I thought I'd prepare my famous Passover popovers outside as I listened to the birds. But I dropped my trays and then bumped my head on the way up to get them. What brings you kids to Mashal this time? Well, we're here to help. Oh. Mr. Safer told us you were hosting a huge Seder, and we all love Passover. Need some hands? Now, isn't that something? See, I thought I had it under control. I've never hosted a big Seder before, only attended others. And I so want to get it right. I have so many people to thank for hosting me all these years. I really had something quite grand in mind. Well, dropping trays isn't the worst thing that could happen. <laughs> I mean, I'm just a little bit clumsy myself. A little? Okay, a lot clumsy. Like, I've tripped up the stairs more than once. Is everything else going okay? That's just the thing. Come, look over here. Wilted! You have a whole herb garden full of parsley? Amazing! Full of wilted parsley. Yesterday it was beautiful. Today? Today they are exhausted. Why not tomorrow? Oh, whatever am I going to do? No, you know, I once read that parsley is in the same family as both celery and cumin. <laughs> Pretty amazing, huh? You don't say. I do. And I think these just need a little water. Maybe you're right, but I doubt I'll have perky parsley in time for the Seder. Huh? I just wanted things to be absolutely perfect. Humpty Dumpty, we want to help make this the best Seder ever. It really will be okay. Where can you use us? You're so kind. Come with me to the kitchen, everyone. I just set up my Seder plate all full of delicious goodies. All except, well, the egg. And the matzo ball soup is simmering now. We heard your matzo ball soup is delicious. Well, isn't that nice? My grandmother once... Whoa! Whoa! Chucky Dumpty! Oh, no! Oh, no! So clumsy, so clumsy. My Seder plate, it's... it's ruined! I wouldn't say that. The haroset has gone everywhere. 
Nobody's going to want floor, Harosette. I'll have to throw it away and start over. Oh, the moror and the lettuce, too. I think the shank bone's okay, but oh my, everything's askew. We can totally fix it. Don't worry. At least nothing got in my lovely, perfect, beloved matzo ball soup. <laughs> oh, ah! oh no! My soup! I've spilled a whole bowl of sugar in it. It's completely ruined. <laughs> oh, Humpty, watch out for the matzo. No! Oh, How did the matzo, matzo end up on the floor? And now it's just... just matzo meal. How could I have a Passover Seder without matzo? It's impossible! <laughs> hey, can you all step outside with me for a moment? <laughs> Poor Humpty Dumpty's really stressed out. He wants this to be the best Seder ever, but it's making him even more anxious than usual. But how can we help? I don't know how to make matzo ball soup. I only know how to eat it. I feel so bad. Poor Humpty Dumpty is putting so much pressure on himself to create the perfect Passover. Maybe he just needs to chill out and remember what he loves so much about Passover. That always made him such a great, cheery guest. Heavy, I really think that's it. He needs space, and he needs to not do everything on his own. And he probably could use a little help, even if he doesn't ask for it. According to my calculations, he needs fresh lettuce, parsley, a new batch of haroset, bitter herbs, and matzah. Plus, he needs to start some soup from scratch. What if we went to gather things and left him to take a deep breath and just make his famous soup? Blue, I love it. That's just what I was thinking. I'll go run and tell him. No! no! Sorry, Jacob. Maybe let someone in there who might not knock everything else over. No offense. Ha! You're right. I'll go, and you all figure out where we're headed. Okay, I'm thinking maybe Evie and I can head to Snow White's house. She does those definitely not poisoned apples. I bet she'd give us some to make new Haroset. That's amazing. Jacob and Blue, do you want to come with me to the Hare's house? He has a beautiful vegetable garden where we could get some lettuce for the Seder plate. I bet he has plenty of fresh parsley as well. And maybe some matzo, too. Actually, I have another idea of a place I want to go. And I know the way. All right, if I head there and we all meet back here soon? Sure, that's fine by me. And Evie's back. What did Humpty Dumpty say? Well, he cried a bit. But I think it was a good cry. He's going to go start another batch of soup. And he says thank you. Where are we heading off to? You're coming with me. Come on, everybody. Good luck. Here's the Hare's Cottage. Yes, hello. Hi there, Mr. Hare. We were just wondering if we could borrow a few items from your garden for Humpty Dumpty's Seder plate. Why, of course. Humpty Dumpty is always such a thoughtful guest. I'm happy to help. I was just doing some juicing. Gotta stay healthy for the next race. When's the next race? Oh, there's always a race coming up. Can't let my dear friend Tortoise get a competitive edge. That guy can eat like three pounds of kale in one sitting. <laughs> ah, you can really taste the radish. Do you happen to have lettuce and parsley? Of course. Those are my favorites. How about matzah? Oh, sorry. I'm fresh out. But look, there's my neighbor Goldilocks out for a jog. Maybe she can help. Hey there, Goldilocks! Oh, hello, Mr. Hare. Hi, kids. Just getting my steps in before Humpty Dumpty's big Seder. I can't wait for a big bowl of his matzo ball soup. Somehow he always makes it the perfect temperature, never too hot or too cold. Humpty Dumpty is actually having a few minor issues with his dinner. We were wondering if you had any extra matzo for the table. Oh my, yes. I make my own, in 18 minutes or less, of course. Not too long, not too short, just right. Here, we can help you pick some fresh lettuce and parsley from the garden. Goldilocks, why don't you grab some matzo and we can all head over to Humpty's together. Perfect. Are we getting close? I think I hear singing. Yes, Snow White's house is right around the corner. Oh, why, hello, little friends. I wasn't expecting company. Are those birds doing your hair? Why, yes, of course. My little bird companions just love styling my hair. Sometimes I find a twig or a piece of hay in it 
but it's a small price to pay. I was just getting ready to visit Humpty Dumpty for Passover. How can I help you? We were wondering if we could borrow some apples. There was a little spill at Humpty Dumpty's house, and his harosid kind of went kersplat. Oh, dear me. Why, of course, you can borrow some apples. I always have them on hand. And don't worry, they're definitely not poisoned. I'll even help you make the haroset. I believe some of my squirrel friends dropped by with walnuts earlier. That would be wonderful. Then we can all walk back to Humpty Dumpty's. He's such a sweet egg. And he makes the best matzo ball soup, too. So we've heard. Well, come in, young friends. No time to waste. The Seder will be starting soon. Yes, my lovelies, you can help, too. The birds are excellent at dicing apples. But how did they hold the knife? With their beaks, silly. <laughs> this is going to be interesting. I wonder what's going on with Blue wherever they went off to. Ah, that must be Mr. Schaefer's house. Gray boxy one with the keep out sign. Ah, okay. Here goes nothing. Can't you read? The sign says go away. It actually says keep out, but eh, semantics. Mr. Safer, we need your help. Why would I ever help you? All you kids do is meddle. It's not for us. It's for Humpty Dumpty. His Seder's a bit of a mess, and I thought you might be able to help me find some bitter herbs for the Seder plate. Why? Because I'm so bitter? Well, yes. Fine. You're right. I have a fridge full of horseradish. I like to spread it on my morning bagel and slather it on my sandwiches at lunch and dollop it on my ice cream for dessert. Ooh, on your ice cream? Listen, I really like horseradish, okay? I'll bring you a jar. For Humpty Dumpty, not for you. Of course. Oh, and Mr. Seyfair, is is that an avocado tree? Why, yes. I call her Shirley. She's my pride and joy. Grew her myself from an avocado pit. Humpty doesn't have an egg on his satyr plate, for obvious reasons. But many people, especially vegans, substitute an avocado pit. It's still round, so it symbolizes the circle of life, but it's also a symbol of growth. Maybe we could even plant it after the satyr. I think... I think Shirley would like that. I'll go pick one. Thank you, Mr. Seyfair. It's good of you to do this for Humpty Dumpty. You kids are real trouble. I haven't forgotten what a mess you've made of all the stories here. But maybe you're not all bad. I'll take that as a compliment. Kids, you came back! And just in time to try the soup. Let me know if it needs any more salt. Jacob! Mary! Vanby! Pika! Blue! I didn't know you'd all be here! Chicken Little! So wonderful to see you again! I'm just helping Mr. Dumpty finish up his famous soup. Don't worry, it's vegetarian. We sent Snow White, Goldilocks, the Hare, and Mr. Safer to the backyard to set the table. And we've got everything you need here to fix up your Seder plate. Well, come on in. The sun is setting! The sun is setting! Not quite yet, but it's definitely about to. We better hurry up and finish the Seder plate. Evie and I made Horoset with Snow White, with the help of some of her bird friends. And they had surprisingly impressive chopping skills. And Jacob and I borrowed fresh parsley and romaine lettuce from the Hare's Garden. The parsley reminds us of spring, and the lettuce symbolizes the bitterness of slavery. Mr. Seyfair lent us a jar of horseradish to use as maror. Also for the bitterness of life as a slave. That guy loves his horseradish. Now, I'll just put a little bit of horosid here. It's supposed to look like the mortar the slaves used. But the apples are sweet to remind us of the sweetness of freedom. Now, we just put back the shank bone, which stands for the sacrifice the Jews made before leaving Egypt. Perfect. But there's one thing missing. Right. The roasted egg. <gasps> Don't worry, Mr. Dumpty and Chicken Little, it's okay. You can substitute this avocado pit for the egg. Mr. Seyfair gave it to us. Wait a minute. Mr. Seyfair gave you an avocado off of Shirley? Wow, he must really like you kids. Oh, he doesn't. He likes you. Actually, I, I think he might like me too. Aw, that just soft boils my yolk. 
My yoke is my heart. I gathered. All right, the table is all set. You're going to love this tablescape. The birds did an admirable job. Grab a seat, everyone. Time to eat. Thanks, kids. You've really saved the day. My famous Passover popovers are looking golden brown and lovely, and my matzo balls are as light and airy as clouds. Finally, I get to host my perfect Passover. Now, try the soup. Delicious! Wow! Ooh, it's wonderful! Best matzo ball soup ever! It's been so lovely to see you all again. You as well. It was really fun gathering ingredients from everyone. Thanks again for sharing. Whoa, sounds like that's our ride home. That magic vortex always shows up right as we start having fun. Hot Sameya, Humpty Dumpty. Hot Sameya, kids. <laughs> oh man, are you serious? We didn't even get to stay for the Seder. You guys know how much I love matzah. It's my whole thing. Well, do you have any in your pocket? I mean, yeah, of course. I always do. Mm. It's good, but it's not the same. We'll just mm. have to be satisfied with the fact that we did a good deed and help Humpty Dumpty welcome his guests. I guess. Hey, do you think we could save PJ's pizza cook-off by doing the same thing? I'm sure some of our neighbors have some cheese or sauce. That's a great idea. And not to distract, but have you noticed our bookmark is starting to look like a... A key! But to what? What does it open? It's a Star of David! We just have to look for something else in that shape and line up the bookmark. Maybe on the sides of the bookcase... Find a Star of David in a synagogue. No problem. Why, hello, children. Did you find that Passover book I mentioned? Ah! PJ, you snuck up on us. No, we didn't find the book, but we found our answers anyway. Excellent. Well, I hope you had an enjoyable time exploring the library and definitely not having any other sort of adventure. We always do. Any luck with the matzah pizza competition? <sighs> Sadly, no. Without the proper ingredients, I'm afraid this yearly tradition is kaput. Hey, you know, we work together to save Humpty Seder. I bet we could do the same for Auntie PJ. Humpty, you say? Just a friend of ours, Auntie PJ. Mary, you're right. My grandma grows prize-winning tomatoes. I'm sure she'd let us have some to make into sauce. I've been growing bell peppers and zucchini in my backyard. We could use those as toppings. We could ask the dairy enthusiasts if we can borrow some cheese. I bet they have more than enough, especially if we tell them it's for a good cause. Pizza! Well, that would be wonderful, children, but we're still missing the most important ingredient. Matzah. Hmm, you're right. Mm, can't make matzah pizza without matzah. Hey, wait a minute. Mm, my mom and dad have a whole cabinet full of matzah. Yes, they always practically buy up the whole store to keep you in matzah year-round. I'm sure they and you could spare a couple boxes for Auntie PJ's pizza competition. Definitely. Oh, really? Oh, how wonderful, kids. You've saved the day. The matzo pizza competition will go on, and you'll all have to enter. Of course. I wonder how horseradish tastes on pizza. Huh? huh? It might be good. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> Snuggle up and let me read you a little something. Have a seat, a bite to eat, and settle right in for hugs, snuggles, stories, and more, and so many sweet things in store. Mm-hmm. Welcome to Afternoons with Mimi. Great job. All right, stir just a little more. Okay, you ready? Dump this right in. Yep. Stir, stir, stir. Good job. Can I put some of these tomatoes in? That's what they're there for. How about these? 
Ooh, the hearts of palm. Sure, why not? And what else do we have to add, Mimi? Hmm, well, let's see. We've got the greens from the garden, the squash, the tomatoes, the hearts of palm, the beans, the herbs. We just need the... The dressing! Yes! Can I help make it? Absolutely. Grab that little empty container right there, and I will get the oil. All right, I'm going to help you pour it. We're going to pour right up to this line right here. Steady, steady. All right, great. And now the vinegar. And that goes to here? Perfect. You've got it. Now squeeze this. An orange? That's the secret. Juice from half an orange. And a little dash of this and this. Honey? Mustard? How much? <laughs> Measure with your heart, Nishama. <laughs> good, good, good. Now just a sprinkle of spices, and we put the cap on, and here you go. Now you know what to do. Shake it up! Yeah, good shaking. Keep going, keep going. Yeah, shake for one, two, three, four, and we're done. Perfect. Now, let's cover the salad and pop it in the fridge until everyone gets here. Mimi? Yes? Why does everyone call this the kitchen sink salad? Because it has everything but the kitchen sink. Ema makes it with olives. Yes, and Uncle Joel leaves out the tomatoes but adds watermelon and cilantro. And when Big Cousin Shelly makes it, she puts so much fancy cheese in it. <laughs> yeah, she does. Everyone in our family puts their own spin on this recipe, and that's the fun of it. I still don't really understand why we call it the kitchen sink salad. Well, snuggle up on over here, and I'll tell you a little something. <laughs> you always say that. When your Ema was very, very little, we lived in a neighborhood that loved to have big parties twice a summer. The whole street would get blocked off. There would be music and games and dancing, and everyone would bring something different to eat and share. What did people bring? Oh, all sorts of things. Cake and cookies, rice and beans, casseroles, fruit trays, and... Oh, Mrs. Swarthmore always made a gigantic gelatin molded into the shape of a lobster. <laughs> it was quite a sight. And you brought the kitchen sink salad? Well, not at first. Making that salad was actually a happy accident. What do you mean? Well, one year it got so hot out that the power went out in part of the neighborhood... We didn't have a generator like some of the neighbors did, so all of the stuff in our fridge went bad. Bad? Oh, yes. It was smelly. Oh, no. Well, it was okay. Our, our fridge got fixed, and we had to do a big cleaning, and, and most of the ingredients for the big dish we were planning were gone. Mrs. Swarthmore said, oh, don't worry. I've got enough to make two gelatin lobsters this year. Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I told her, don't worry. I'll figure something out. We had our little backyard garden with some greens ready to harvest and a couple of tomatoes. And then in the pantry, we found several cans of different things. The dressing is something my own mother and aunts used to make for me. So we grabbed it all, mixed it all together, and brought it to the party. And people liked it? Oh, people loved it. And you didn't have to eat a jelly lobster. <laughs> yeah, not unless you wanted to. And now that salad has become a tradition in our family. We share it with each other and with close friends who feel like family. And just like that special dressing recipe came from my grandparents, now I've taught it to you. It's a tradition? Mm-hmm. And more. It's making memories together, writing our family story, sharing our values. Lador Vador. I think I've heard that before. At school. Yes, it means from generation to generation. Some people like to think of it as building connections between the generations. Every time we say the Shabbat blessings together, share a holiday meal, a story, that's Lador Vador. Was it Lador Vador when we made my brother's tzedakah box? Exactly. And when we sang Someone to Watch Over Me? <laughs> you got it. And when we shake up this dressing and make this funny salad? Mm -hmm, exactly. And when we bring it outside for a family barbecue on a beautiful spring day. Are you ready to finish setting up? I think I am. All right, let's go then, my darling. Everyone will be here soon.
Deep in the basement of Sofa Shalom, there's a dusty library that's really the home of a magical bookcase to another world. When Micah and Miri and their friends are home, where there's wolves and hares living fairy tales, Mr. Safer, the Golem, and glass shoe sales. So come join us for the magic and mystery, maybe even a bit of Jewish history. Jacob, it's a long way to Folktale Village, especially because we have to avoid the most direct route for reasons I still don't understand. And this map isn't exactly the easiest thing to read. <laughs> yeah, lots of horseradish smears. That Mr. Safer really loves his horseradish. Some people have the weirdest eating habits. Ooh, pocket full of matzo. Score. Okay, so are we there yet? Not yet, Jacob. Sometimes life is more about the journey than the destination. And you could search for years and years until you... Oh, wait, never mind. There it is. Oh, the cottage the kitten's marked on our map. Awesome. I hope they have snacks. Same. Like trail mix level or better. Let's go. Looks kind of abandoned. Do I just, uh, knock? Hmm, try the doorbell, Evie. Ooh, that's catchy. Kids! Cinderella, is that you? What are you doing here? That's exactly what I've been saying. This isn't quite the royal abode I've become accustomed to. This cottage doesn't even have air conditioning. And this gown is made of, like, Fifty layers of tulle, not exactly breathable. And what brings you children to the middle of nowhere? We're heading to Folktail Village to help fix the whole golem situation. But the three little kittens told us we could rest at this cottage. The golem disaster, you mean, Micah? Hey, Punzi, we've got company. Why don't you kids come on in? I could really use some help. This place is covered in at least ten years of dirt and grime. Huh, nice place you've got here. A little dusty, though. <coughs> Any chance you have snacks? Of course. Help yourselves. There's trail mix in the kitchen. Hmm, with raisins? Yes. Oh, and chocolate candies? Well, Jacob and Evie, you know I wouldn't consider it trail mix without the chocolate candies. Why, that's the best part. Yes! yes! You know, when I was your age, I was already doing a lot of chores around the house. Mostly sweeping the cinders around the fireplace, but also plenty of mopping and dusting. <laughs> uh, great story, Cindy. Uh, we're just gonna go grab some food and... Uh... Seems like you're the perfect age to get started with deep cleaning. Your small hands can fit into every nook and cranny. Uh-huh. So, when you're done snacking, can you start scrubbing the grout? Here's a sponge for each of you. Teamwork makes the dream work, after all. Uh, um, okay. D sure. Uh, we'll do the best we can. The bleach is under the sink. Rapunzel, you coming? Be right there. Oh, these ridiculous extensions. My neck is getting so sore. Oh, <sighs> It's like carrying a 30-pound weight around my head. Hi, kids. Nice to meet you. I'm Rapunzel. We gathered. I'm Blue. This is Miri and Micah. Evie and Jacob just headed to your kitchen for trail mix. Ah, uh, yes. The kind with the chocolate candies. Your hair, it looks, um... Uncomfortable? Smart kids. It's not just uncomfortable, it's downright painful. You see, I've been rocking the most adorable pixie haircut. It's true, it totally shows off her cheekbones. Oh, thank you, Cindy. Okay, so all of a sudden, Golem is up in my face saying he's setting things right. And before I knew it, uh, he had added these heavy hair extensions. Are they real hair? 
Maybe it's horse hair? Um, I'm pretty sure those are just straight up yarn. Some of it's green. You're right, young friend. It's heavy wool yarn. It's itchy and hot and green for some reason. Green isn't even my color. It's also picking up every dust bunny in this place. Don't worry, Rapunzel. We'll find a way to help you. Cinderella, what about you? It's a long way to your castle. Exactly! Golem plopped me back here and swapped my sweet bedazzled sweatsuit for this poofy monstrosity of a dress. Something about putting things back in their proper place. At least he stocked the kitchen for us. I'm having a carriage sent to take us home, but it's a long drive, and they won't be here until tomorrow. And this place is a pigsty. It's cramped and dusty and dirty and... <laughs> My allergies are going crazy! And it's really hard to get everything spick and span when you're wearing a beaded ball gown. Here, everyone grab a broom or a dust rag, and we'll try to tackle this mess together. It's been quite some time since anyone's lived here. Other than the mice, of course. Uh, mice? Don't worry, Miri. They're enchanted mice, so they only bite sometimes. Is that larger-than-average Phidibus Regis in the corner also enchanted? The what now? The big old regal jumping spider over there. Ah! <gasps> what? Th they're not toxic. No need to scream. Thank goodness my sisters and bonus mom moved to Boca Raton before this disaster. I hope they're out on their lanai drinking smoothies with little umbrellas in them. Ooh, smoothies? Ouch! My hair keeps getting caught on the rusty nails. Oh, sorry, Punzi. I'll help you untangle it. Cinderella, I thought your relationship with your stepmom was, um, less than stellar. <laughs> Common misconception, we actually had a lot of fun. Ugh, I can't seem to scrub off this blue spot over here. Oh, don't worry about that, Miri. It's just a drop of paint. It's been there forever. My stepsisters and I used to love to paint together, though we wound up dripping quite a bit onto the floor. Oh, and of course, the mice always help, too. Actually, I wonder... If I just use a little bit of cleaning spray to get rid of this grime... Wow. The whole wall is a painting! What a beautiful mural of the forest! My stepsisters and I worked on it together. It took us months. What about the marks in the doorway over here? Ah, yes. My stepmom marked each of our heights there every year on our birthday. There's a sticker stuck under the chair here. You want me to try and get it off? Looks like an apple. Let me take a look. <laughs> you can leave those. I doubt you'd be able to scrape them off now anyway. My sisters and I ran out of room in our sticker book, so we each put our favorite sticker under our chair. I wonder if Babs, my stepmom, ever found out. We had every kind of sticker you can imagine. Sparkly, glow-in-the-dark, color-changing, what... I think that one under the chair is scratch and sniff. I wonder if it still smells. Oh, yep. Just a hint of eau de not-so-poisoned apple. Seems like you had a good time here. You know, we really did. I mean, it's no massive echoey castle with gilded hallways and 83 marble bathrooms. But the royal perfumery has never managed to nail down that perfect, not-so-poisoned apple scent. Personally, I kind of like how cozy it is. I mean, I grew up in a tall tower alone, so this feels downright spacious with, like, lots of room for company. I bet you could throw a wonderful get-together in here. Ooh, like a Shabbat lunch. I bet you're right. The castle has very strict rules around parties and galas. No children, no mice, and of course, no celebrations after midnight. Plus, the king and queen always insist on serving the fanciest food, like caviar and pate, and those are just not my speed. <sighs> what I wouldn't give for a good pizza party. I'm more of a matzo man myself. But I'd never say no to an olive, roasted pepper, and anchovy slice. That sounds interesting. Ouch! 
That mouse just pulled my hair. Sorry, that's Frances. She's really into sewing, and I'm pretty sure she thought your woolly hair would make a great sweater. She's not wrong. It is a nice green color. It even matches your eyes. Well, thank you, Blue. You know, I think I've been looking at this all wrong. There's always something to be grateful for, even when you're far from home and hopelessly itchy. Why don't you kids stay for the night? It's getting dark out and we've got plenty of beds and a kitchen full of snacks, thanks to Golem. More things to be thankful for. In fact, I think we have all the makings of, dare I say it, a pizza party. Yes! Evie, Jacob, can you check the fridge for anchovies? We're on it. Staying overnight does seem like a good idea. We can rest up for the next part of our journey. And Cindy, didn't you mention that you used to love jogging around these forests? You could get in a good run tomorrow and maybe see some of your favorite childhood sights. You're right. The cute little lake with baby ducklings each spring. The fig tree that grows the sweetest figs in the whole world. That tree stump covered in super soft moss where I used to stop for a water break. I'll get to see it all. Perfect. Did you ever see any aloe plants during your runs through the forest, Cinderella? Now that you mention it, I, I think so. Oh, if you pick a few leaves, we can use the gel inside to help with Rapunzel's itchy scalp. Oh, that sounds wonderful. And until we can get you to the royal salon to safely remove those extensions, I bet it would help to braid your hair. It would at least stop it from dragging on the floor. Even better. I'm happy to help. I used to do my sister's hair before every ball. Well, I'm grateful to have friends like you. Micah, Blue, why don't you get started on the pizzas and we'll get to braiding? It might take a while. Great idea, Miri. Okay, now if I can just find the ends of your hair, we can get started. Ah, here we go. Here, pass that one over to me. And this piece goes underneath. Yep, and this one goes on top. Uh, mm -hmm. Yep. There we go. And through. Uh, oh, great job. Mm -hmm. mm. It's beautiful. Hey, this is going faster than I thought. Well, that's because the mice are helping. Extra cheese on the pizza, please, kids! Ouch! One just bit me. Sorry. They're enchanted, but they're still mice. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, Jacob. Oh, man. Did I oversleep? We're just up a little early having breakfast. <sighs> I've been up for hours. I had the best night's sleep and went on an early run. Turns out Barb's workout gear fits me just fine, and I know she won't mind me borrowing it. I forgot how beautiful the sunrise is over the trees. Nothing better than cold pizza for breakfast. Yum. Want some, Jacob? Well, of course. Last night's pizza party was epic. Mm, how fortunate that Golan left us plenty of perfect pizza toppings. And an assortment of anchovies. I love having parties here. They're just so much more personal. That's not to say I don't miss having a cleanup crew, but I forgot how much I enjoy a smaller soiree. And that aloe gel really soothes my scalp. I'm loving this braid, too. Thanks, Mary. And, um, thanks, mice. You know, this reminds me of something. Hakarat Hatov. Uh, haka what now? Hakarat Hatov. It means recognizing the good. It's all about gratitude and looking for the positive whenever possible, even when it's hard. Like remembering how nice it is to sleep in my cozy childhood bed and all those pretty sights along my morning run. And the fact that you have the good kind of trail mix. And how great it is to have an itch-free scalp and a fashionable braid. And the fun of having a pizza party with friends. Hakarat Hatov. Recognize the good in your life. You might be surprised how much there is to say thanks about. In fact, it's a Jewish practice to try to find at least 100 reasons to say blessings every day for all the little and big things we have. That's a lot of blessings. 
turns out there's a lot to appreciate in this world, and your world too. Oh, uh, the royal carriage is here. You know, even though it was an inconvenience at first, I'm thankful for this cottage. Now that it's squeaky clean again, I think I'd like to come back here soon. It's full of good memories, and it's a great place for more intimate parties. The prince and I were just thinking that we'd love to do a much smaller Passover Seder this year. Those giant Seders can be a little overwhelming. We always end up hard-boiling 18 dozen eggs, and guess who stuck peeling them? You? Well, n no, because I'm a princess, but I'm sure someone is. We'll walk you kids out. Be sure to take some extra trail mix for the road. Way ahead of you. Already filled all my pockets. Kids, thanks for all your help. Good luck on your journey, and remember to look for all the good things along the way. Um, is that a goat? It's most definitely the same weird goat we saw last time. And now it's wearing a floppy sun hat with polka dots and feathers. Huh. You know, I could swear that hat belonged to an old friend. She was, like, a little peculiar, but she had style. Went by Petronella Juniper. I was never sure that was her real name. Petronella Juniper? Auntie PJ! I hope she's not in trouble. We've got to follow that goat! Blue's right. Have a safe trip home, princesses. We've got a goat to catch. Come on, everyone. Let's go. Welcome to Have I Got a Story for You, produced by PJ Library, a program of the Harold Grinspoon Foundation. PJ Library sends great, expertly curated books to families raising Jewish children every month for free. Just be clear, I'm not saying for three, like if the books cost $3 or something. No, the books are free with an F, as in Felicia is my f, -f, -f furry pet ferret. Or forget about sending us money because PJ Library books are f, f, f free thanks to our generous donors. You can sign up at pjlibrary.org. Have I never told you guys about my pet ferret, Felicia? She's so cute and fluffy. Actually, I brought her to the studio today. Say hi, Felicia. I haven't brought her in before because, well, I know not everyone is an animal lover, which I totally respect. But the person I was specifically thinking about told me he's trying to be open to meeting more animals, and he actually wanted me to bring her in, which I also totally respect. So, Al the sound engineer, what do you think of Felicia? She is, uh, she's here. No, oh, she's pretty cute. Oh, yes, she is. And she's also very friendly and soft and fluffy and has tiny little ears. So you're, you're welcome to come in here and meet her up close anytime you feel like it. Oh, no, no, I'm, I'm good. You, you do your thing. I'll, I'll appreciate it from over here. Oh, you don't feel like it right now. I get it. No problem. You know what, Al? You might have something in common with the main character of our story today. Why don't we jump in? He actually recorded the whole thing himself. Oh, right, the, the whole thing where you ask kids to send us a voicemail. Exactly. Hmm. Cue up that sample I sent you. Uh, rolling. Okay, I think I'm safe here. At least for now. Right. I'll talk as long as I can. But sorry in advance if I have to start running all of a sudden. It's just the way things are right now. This is Special Agent David King. I won't say my current location in case things don't go my way. And this recording falls into the wrong hands. Uh, let's see. Conditions here, not great. I finished my food supply a while ago, and I'm getting hungry. I have no water, and I haven't seen the others in a while, so I don't know who's still running, who made it out, and who might have been found. I'm gonna need to... Ah! Spider, I gotta run! 
So yeah, David's pretty awesome. Running through the woods on some kind of intense secret mission. We'll jump right back in with him in a sec. But just to update you, my ferret Felicia is nosing around by the production booth door. Al, I think she wants to come visit. Uh, listen, thanks, but I have I have a lot of sound to engineer right now, so I... I Understood, no problem. Yeah. Come here, Fifi, you can sit on Mama's lap. What's that? Oh, I know, sweetie, sound happens everywhere all the time without anyone engineering it. But somehow it's different with podcasts, so Al needs to be by himself for now, okay? Let's listen to David's next recording. All right, sorry about that. Man, if I could make all the spiders in the world disappear, I would. Seriously, who would miss them? I wouldn't. I know, there'd be so many more flies around if the spiders weren't eating them. But I'm fine with that. They'd be happier flies, at least. Not afraid all the time of getting trapped in a gross, sticky web and being kept prisoner by an ugly spider. Right now, I know how that feels. Knowing I could be caught. At any moment. Poor flies. I'm gonna get out of here. One day I'll come back and I'll have spider spray, if that's a thing. And I'm gonna get rid of every creepy, crawly, little, stupid spider. Uh oh. This could be it. Oh. Whew. It's just the twins. Wanna go this way? Yeah, maybe we can hey, find a. Be quiet. He'll get us all caught. David? Where is he? I don't know. Oh, those bushes with the hands sticking out waving at us. Get in. Let me just squeeze right in there. Okay, just... Logan, you can't both fit on that side. Flo is already there. I know. Can you move over? No, I don't trust those leaves over there. Could be poison ivy or poison something else. Oh, yeah. I, I forgot, you don't do leaves. Or bugs. Or squirrels. Don't tell me you fall for their whole cute furry thing, Florentia. Um, squirrels are the most selfish creatures on the planet. Fine, I'll go over there. That's not poison ivy. If you say so. So, have you two seen anything? Jen got caught. What? But Jen never gets caught. <sighs> so, she's out. I think it was Adam's fault. I I think he gave her up to save himself. No! Shh! You're gonna get us caught! My brother would never do that. What? Of course he would. <sighs> yeah, he totally would. I guess I just wish it wasn't true. I know. You'd never do that. We all know that. But Adam was like a squirrel. Aunt Karen mailed us a whole box of Hamantash and Last Borum, but Adam ate them all, right there by the mailbox, so we wouldn't even know they came. Of course you'd find out they came. Aunt Karen always calls to make sure that we tried them, and to ask if we liked her experimental chocolate ones. Even though she perfected those, like, in 1982. Exactly. Hey, speaking of food, neither of you has any, do you? Not me. Me neither. You thinking of going back to get some? Are you kidding? I might as well turn myself in. Yeah. What about... Do you guys have the Uncle Stone? Wait, no. Don't tell me. It's safer if I don't know. We don't have it. Oh. Okay, so the only thing to do is keep moving. We probably don't have a lot of time until they... Shh. We're not safe here. Too many of us. And it's too gross in these bushes. I feel like I've got spiders all over me. What do we do? I'm not sure. Do you know if spider spray is a real thing? I mean about not getting caught. Oh, right. We need to split up and make a promise. Logan and I are not splitting up. Obviously. No, I mean you guys go one way, I'll go another. But if I get caught, I promise to make a ton of noise to cover your footsteps so you can run like crazy. Nice. And we'll promise to do the same thing for you. I know you will, because we're like family. We are family. We're your cousins. I know, but I mean, it's just within the whole... Ugh, never mind. Look, you guys go that way. There's more cover over there for two people, and I'm going to head back that way. What? That's a dead end. And there's nothing over there. You'll be so easy to catch. There's something there. I mean, there was. If it's still there, 
It would only help one person and not a pair of you. Oh. All right, we'll see you soon. That's right. I like the attitude. You will see me soon. Take care of yourselves. Ooh, I am on the edge of my seat. What do you think is going to happen here? Will David be okay? What about Flo and Logan? Will Al ever get over his fear of animals? No, I, 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 I'm not afraid. I, I am just right. less right, right. than comfortable anyway, around... Anyway, David's story is very similar to a very old Jewish story called a Midrash. Ben Sirah told a story of King David, leader of the Jewish people, fleeing from the nefarious, that's a big word for evil, King Saul, and hid in a cave with an assist from a spider. You can learn more on our website, gotastorypodcast.com. Now, let's see if our David's story has a similar ending. So, a long time ago, I was in the same situation, and I built a kind of a, a little fort. It was just a little further that way. There were a few small boards of wood, just enough to lean together and cover them up with some branches for camouflage. If you've ever seen a sukkah, it kind of looked like that, but tinier. No room for your whole family to have Shabbat dinner. Anyway, I don't know if it's still there, but there isn't really any other option. Ho, 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 hoot, hoot! Oh no, the twins got caught, but they kept the promise. Thank you, guys. Here we go. Oh, run! David, run! His cousins just got caught, and he needs to get to that little fort or he'll get caught too. We don't even know who's catching them, so we'll just keep listening. But first, really quickly, I wanted... I, I wanted to tell you guys the cutest thing. A couple of minutes ago, Al, the sound engineer, opened the door to get something, and he accidentally let my ferret Felicia into his production booth. But he hasn't told me to come get her. She's playing it cool, just checking out all his sound equipment. And he's just kind of pretending not to notice her. Uh, Rita, you know I can hear everything you say in there, right? Uh, there's, there's microphones everywhere. <laughs> and I'm the sound engineer. And d did I hear you say that that the, the creature is, is in the room with me? Is, is that true? Is that something that's oh, actually hey, happening right Let's now? check back in with David King running through the woods, right? Yeah. Almost there. Oh, hey. Hey, little bro. Glad to see you're still running free. Of course I am. What are you doing headed in this direction? This is a dead end with no good cover. Same question for you. Fair enough. I had a feeling I'd find something here. The Uncle Stone. Did you find it? Oh, sweet! I thought you'd like it. I'd never really gotten a close look at it. Why would you let me know you have it? Because I want to give it to you. What? Why? You're not a little squirt anymore. You're a superstar out here. You're Special the... Agent David King. Sure. Okay. Look, I want to team up and win this with my brother. You take this. Whoa, it's heavier than it looks. I have a plan, and I need the one person I can definitely trust. You take the Uncle Stone all the way into the dead end. Then I'll go to the complete other side of the woods and make a big distraction. That will give you cover to head to the end goal. I trust you to wait for me there, and we'll do this thing together. That's actually pretty brilliant. No one's ever tried it before. Who could pull it off besides you and me? We're the best. I think Jen would disagree with that. If she was still here. What? What did you hear? You saw the twins. Look. Look at what you're holding. You know we could really do this. Don't you want to do this? Shh. Oh no. We're cornered. I can't go that way to the end goal. Okay. Just go deeper in. I'll take care of it. What are you going to do? Just go. Oh, yes. It's still here. My fort is still here. Smaller than I remember, though. Well, I guess I grew. 
and it got really disgusting. I'm just gonna ignore everything that's been growing in here for a couple of years. Oh no, there's a big spider! Can't stay, I gotta get out. I need... <gasps> you can stop right there, Adam. It's over for you. Uh, my head fell off outside the fort. If they see it, they'll know I'm in here. You know what, Darcy? Good. I'm glad you're here. I uh, no, it's not good for you at all. Actually, it is. Oh yeah? Why? Because you'd rather get someone who has the Uncle Stone. No! I'm listening. Since I gave it to my brother, and since I know exactly where he took it, I'd say I'm pretty valuable to you. Uh-huh, and what do you suggest we do? You want to get out of here with the Uncle Stone. I just want to get out of here a free man. If I lead you to my brother, we both get what we want. No one's ever done a deal like that before. Who could pull it off besides you and me? We're the best. Adam King, you really are evil. Giving up your own brother? Well, you're more like a big sister to me than a cousin. Uh-huh. Really, you're like the only one I can trust, and you're a superstar out here. I want to team up and win this with you. Remember how you and I dominated the chair tunnel game at Charlie's Bar Mitzvah? Okay, okay. Enough sweet talk. Where's David? Just like I told him to. He's running into the dead end, where I knew you and I could get him. He's right down this trail. Adam is standing right there. Okay, Adam. So go get him. What? Look, I'm not a gullible little kid, and I don't think your brother is either. But you admit you tried to trick him, and I bet you're trying to trick me, too. I'll wait right here, and if you can go get him and show me the Uncle Stone, we've got a deal. Yeah. Okay. Hang on. I knew Adam was lying to me. Jen is so good, he had to get her out of his way. And now he's trying to knock me out, too. And there's nothing I can do. I'm trapped in my own fort, waiting for one of them to notice me, and then I'm finished. I can't even... Squirrel! What the... My hat? Holy cow, I wish this was recording video. A squirrel just crawled in here, dragging my hat with his teeth. Thanks, little critter. Ugh, and he crawled out of here under a web that this spider is making. I'm going to have to clear that out to get away. Yeah. This is crazy. He has to be here. Uh-huh. That was a pretty good waste of my time, Adam. I'll give you that. No, he's here. He's got to be right around here. Just let me look. There's nowhere to hide here. That's why only dum-dums like you would come this way. He's tricking us. He's got a... Wait... What's that? Look in there. That's a totally obvious Adam hiding place. Ew, this pile of rotting wood and leaves? No, there's a huge spider web covering the opening, so no one's gone in there for a long time. He must have just laid down, and somehow we ran right past him when you were chasing me. He can't have gone very far. Drop the story already, Adam. It's over. He was here. <sighs> uh-huh. I'm ending this. Darcy, think about all What I'm could... thinking about is that you are done. No! Why'd you do that? I was gonna help you for real. I'll see you later, cuz. Besides, I'm tired of running, and I want to grab some of Aunt Nancy's lemonade punch before the rest of you drink it all. All right. Good game, I guess. Where's David? Hey, Darcy, wait up. Did, did all that really just... Happen? So now, I have the Uncle Stone. Adam has been caught. Darcy is now headed off in the other direction somewhere. And I was just saved by a squirrel and a spider and a bunch of leaves that are surprisingly comfortable to lay on. I'm getting help from the craziest places, and I may actually be about to do this. Spider friend, thanks for the web. Sorry I need to bust through it, but you'll make a new one real quick, I'm sure. Oh, oh dear. You, you, you. That is a sticky whip, but I love it. Okay, here goes. Here. Oh. Oh, oh, you guys, I think David's about to do it. First, I didn't know if he could do it. Then I thought his brother was going to stop him from doing it. And I still don't really know what it is, but I think he's about to do it. 
And Al, the sound engineer, I'm glad you're hearing this part of the story about giving other creatures a chance, because sometimes you'll find out they're really your friends. Al? Sorry, I, I couldn't push the intercom button to answer you right away, because uh, there's a ferret climbing up my arm. Oh, that means she really likes you. You two keep bonding. The rest of us are going to hear the end of David's story and figure out what game it is that everyone's playing. I can't tell if it's Capture the Flag, a LARP, Parcheesi, or maybe all of the above. I'm almost there. All right, kids, dinner is about ready, and we got Aunt Cheryl on FaceTime. Is this, uh, is this wrapping up? I think so, Ma. Wow, it is a long one this year. Has Nathan been to the bathroom? Yes. yes. It'll be over soon, Ma. Almost everybody's out. Except for... Except for the 2019 Family Chase Champion, Special Agent David King. Okay, take off the shoes when you come inside, everyone. Mara! Hey, little David won that big chasing game or whatever it is they've been doing in the woods all day. Well, they better still have my paperweight. I got that at the Bushwick Flea in 1987. We got it, Uncle Ira. David, I've never seen you covered in dirt and leaves. It's a good look for you, champ. There's a lot of spiders this year. Aren't you, like, afraid of bugs? Not anymore. You finally realize you can just squash them? No, I don't want to squash them. I just realized that even a super creepy one might give you something helpful. Right, Adam? Oh! (laughs) Ha, ha, ha. Enjoy your moment, little man. I don't know how you did it, but nice work. Yes. Yes. Yes! 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 Let's eat. Wait, what's that? I'm just turning off my voice recorder. Oh, I forgot you keep that on when you do your special agent thing. Yeah, I recorded the whole family chase this year, because they might make it into a podcast. A podcast? Wait, you recorded, like, everything that happened out here? Yep. My sweet brother, you know that I wanted you to win that whole time. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, this went exactly how I planned. Yeah, right. Seriously, I just, I couldn't tell you because, you know, your reaction had to be believable, so... Ah! Is there something in my hair? Let me see. Oh yeah, there's a big spider. Hang on, I'll scoop him up so we can send him back into the woods. Thanks, bro. Hey, so you and I should win together next year. Here's what I'm thinking, and it's your call, of course. You're the champ, but with my brains and my strength and your... You know, smaller brains, uh, we could do it. Wow. Well, congratulations to David on his epic victory and on learning that every single plant, animal, and person has an important purpose and something to give, even if we don't know what it is. Take bees, for example. Of course, no one wants to get stung by a bee, but we know that honeybees make delicious honey. But did you also know that while they're making honey, they're helping to pollinate all kinds of plants that people rely on for food? In fact, it's estimated that about a third of the food we eat couldn't grow without this pollination help from bees, other insects, birds, and bats. One third of our food! That's like one whole meal from each day. So if you wished for those creatures to disappear just because they bug you or creep you out, it'd be like wishing for there to be no more lunch ever. Speaking of lunch, it's time for me to feed my ferret, Felicia, but she's having the time of her life in there with Al the Sound Engineer. Rita, Rita, look! Look at the little face she's making! Who's the muffin? You're the muffin. Yes? Do you see this? Oh, beefy, beefy. So this episode no, has two happy endings. Wait, I didn't say you had to stop. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Snuggle up and let me read you a little something. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Grab a seat, a bite to eat, and settle right in. For hugs, 
snuggles, stories and more, and so many sweet things in store. Welcome to Afternoons with Mimi. Mimi! Mimi! Hi, 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 my love. Shh, shh. I know you have something exciting to tell me, but your baby brother is sleeping. Oh, okay. Well, I was going to tell you that tomorrow is silly hat day at school. Can I borrow your gardening hat? Oh, yes, yes, of course. Wait, what's that music? Ah, I forgot to turn the radio off. Do you like what you hear? Yes, it's beautiful. What's that song called? I think I know it. Someone to watch over me. Oh, wait. Did you used to sing it to me, too? (laughs) You know I did. This has been my special settle for nap time song for all of my grandchildren. My mom used to sing it to me when I was little, too. So it's a very old song. (laughs) I guess that depends on your definition of old. It was written in 1926 by a pair of famous Jewish brothers, actually. Like me and Z? Yeah, brothers just like you. Would you like to hear a little bit about them? Yes. Okay, let me turn this down a little. And grab you a little snack. All right, hop on up here to your chair. There's your juice and a nice plate of... Bagel chips! Yeah, sh- 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 oh, yes, they're your favorite. With some strawberry cream cheese dip right there. All right, remember, we have to keep it down to let Z sleep. Sorry. No worries. Now, snuggle on up, and I'll tell you a little something about the famous musician brothers who wrote this special song. Once upon a time, there were two brothers, Ira and George. Who was the big brother? I believe Ira was older. He and his brother George were born in Brooklyn, New York, and would go on to become some of the greatest songwriters in American history. Did they have other brothers and sisters? Um, I think they did. We will have to look that up later. Ira liked to write the words, and George would write the music. They were a team. And in 1926, they wrote that song you love so much. Someone to watch me? So close. Someone to watch over me. Was that their only song? Oh, no, no, not at all. They wrote so many wonderful and beautiful songs. Together? Yeah. They each started out writing songs on their own, but then began working together. Maybe when Z is a little older, you two can build and make things together, too. And Mimi, you said they were Jewish like us, too? Yes, Ira and George were both Jewish. Their parents were from Russia and came to New York to raise their family. Growing up, the brothers and their siblings all heard traditional klezmer music and other traditional songs that people in their community sang and played. And this influenced the music they would write later. So, is liking music part of being Jewish? (laughs) Yeah, you could say that. Think of it this way. Jewish life is rich in song. We sing in synagogue. We sing blessings. And during holidays... We sing... We sing a lot, especially at Passover. Yes, especially at Passover. You do love to belt out, chad gad ya. Anyway, music is fundamental to Jewish expression. It's even referred to in the earliest chapters of the Torah. Fittingly, when the major influx of Eastern European Jews arrived in the United States in the late 19th century, they brought their songs with them. Eventually, strains from Jewish music began popping up in mainstream America through artists like Ira and George Gershwin. Mimi, can we hear that song again? The one you were playing for Z? Certainly, Nishama. Mimi. Yes? What are the words to the song? Will you tell me? There's a somebody I'm longing to see. I hope that she turns out to be... Someone to watch over me. That's my favorite part. Mine too. (gasps) Oh, someone's up. That was a short nap. But he's in a happy mood. Can we all sing together? Sure. Let's sing to Z while we get him out of his crib. There's a somebody I'm longing to see. I hope that he turns out to be someone who'll watch over me.
Om.